This is Mike Bot. Today I'm doing a video on failed filament sensor on the AMS unit. So as you can see here, the filament sensors are all white here. This one's red for a reason and that one's white. This one's red because I really pushed it in there, but now that I've taken it out, there's no light as you can see. So if I push it in, no light comes up at all. But if I keep pushing it in, we get an error that otherwise doesn't detect it. And to further prove that, I will open up the Bamboo Handy app and show you that it's not being detected at all. So as you can see in the Bamboo Handy app, it says empty. And clearly it's not empty. So that basically means we have a failed filament sensor and we need to go through the painful process of replacing it, unfortunately. So you're gonna have to buy yourself one of these here. They're called the AMS feeding units. They're $10 Canadian on Amazon. Keep a bunch of those in stock because these things fail all the time. I swear I'm replacing these things at least once a month, if not once every month and a half on the five different AMS units. So stock up on those and prepare yourself for this painful, but easy, but very painful replacement. So I'm gonna go and get this thing uh, set on a table and I'll proceed with the video from there. All right, so as shown, when you get that error with the uh, AMS, uh, I guess you can call it a filament tunnel, that typically indicates it's time to replace the feeding unit. So now we're gonna go ahead and proceed with that. So make sure your printer is completely shut off. Disconnect the cable in the back, the PTFE tube. Uh, to remove the PTFE tube, make sure all the filament is out of the place. And then there's a little thing here. You use two fingers, press down tightly and gently tug the PTFE tube. Be careful not to break the clips. Otherwise you have to replace the entire filament hub and it's $70 to replace that. So next, you're gonna grab your Allen key. Take out the two screws in the back here. I've already done that. And then we're gonna gently tug on this and use your fingers to kind of just wedge the connector in the back so it doesn't get stuck. And then from here, you're gonna see two cables in the back. Yours might still have glue on them if you haven't done any troubleshooting. So you'll have to remove the glue gently, but otherwise you just gently remove the two cables in the back and that completely frees this unit here. So if you have any uh, desiccant holders or if you have any humidity monitors, remove them completely out of the way. And now comes the fun part. So in my case, it was the third unit that was defective. So we're gonna begin by disconnecting the PTFE tube here on the third unit. So press and hold down on the circular thing here and pop the PTFE tube out. If it doesn't come out easy, it's still locked in. Be careful or you're gonna remove the little teeth inside here and you need to replace the filament hub once again. So from here, it's a number of screws. Uh, there's a number of screws here to release this entire unit right here. And the screws are basically right here and here. I think there was three or four in total. Um, anyway, we'll just go ahead and start removing them. And I will mention if there was a third or fourth once I get to that step. So you're gonna need your Allen key. I believe this is the smaller Allen key, not the bigger one. So take your small Allen key and unscrew it. And I'll just use a little bit of camera magic here and magically remove the screws. So it was four screws in total. One, two, three, four. So I will just add, this is the most painful thing to do in the AMS. It's the most painful replacement. And you're about to see why. So now that it's unscrewed, you're gonna notice that there's a bit of resistance and the reason for that is because there's still cables connected. So you wanna trace the uh, cable for this specific unit. So the reason I like to uh, unscrew it first is so I can make sure I am removing the right cable. So the PTFE tube we're not too worried about. It's the uh, connector cable, which I believe is this one right here. 
So if you trace it, it goes up to here. And then we just want to undo the little clip here and the unit is now out. So now that it's free, we can remove this PTFE tube. So same situation as before, press and hold gently and remove. Now we're completely free to start working on this unit. So put this aside so you don't damage it. And now the fun starts, I hate this part. So here we got one, two, three, and there's a hidden screw somewhere under there if I remember correctly. So go ahead and start taking it apart. So I'll just do a little bit of camera magic again and the screws will be magically gone. Okay, so there was the three screws I showed and then I mentioned there was an invisible one. There's the invisible one down there. So, all right, the four screws have been removed. Put them aside somewhere safe. Now we can remove the top cover here gently. And basically the unit we are replacing is this guy right here. So now we can undo it. We're gonna have to remove the glue from here because this is gonna go into the new unit. So I'm just gonna remove the glue and we'll proceed from there. So there is no easy way to remove the glue. Um, I use an X-Acto knife and very, very carefully chip away at it. So now that that part's free and clear, now we gotta remove the actual uh, feeding unit out of the cover because we will need to reuse that cover. If you want to play it safe, remove the little spring. I believe the new unit does come with a spring, but these springs are easy to lose and there's no replacements for them. Okay, so to remove this part, we're going to need to basically put your Allen key in there and pull the little uh, part there. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but basically that's what's holding it together is that piece. Oof, I almost lost it. Okay, and here is our culprit. This is the most annoying replacement because of this spring. So now, we will grab the new one. And as you can see, the new one does not come with a new cable. So be careful with the cable. So just so you don't confuse them and mix them up, put the old one in the box, chuck it out or leave it for spare parts or whatever. So now, line this up properly. So basically slip this into the hole there and then line it up and feed this through to hold it all together. Make sure it's in there good. Find a way to tap it in gently. Okay, and that's in there. So now that that's been put in, you wanna connect your cable back. And you can do the cable afterwards, but it's gonna make it very, very hard to put in. Getting this basically in here without the spring falling apart is very, very difficult. If this unit is dirty, give it a quick cleaning. So let's slip this cable back in. It only goes in one way, so just be gentle with it. You can apply new glue if you want, or don't, I usually don't. All right, so now we need to carefully Get this part in without the spring falling. I always, always have difficulty with this part. So what you want to do is the spring has to basically go right there, but there's no easy way of doing this. And I just have to wiggle around and the spring may come flying out and you may lose it. And that's why I told you to put the other one aside to be safe. And this is a lot harder with a camera 
in front of me. Don't worry about the gears. You can always adjust them afterwards with a Allen key. So if they come out of uh, their place, you can readjust them later. Okay, the struggle continues. Okay, so I think I've got it. You might have to mess around with the gears a little bit. So basically once I get to this spring part, I put it like that and then it goes right in. I think I got it. Yes, I got it. Okay, we'll worry about the gears afterwards because I had to adjust the gears here to get it to fit. But the spring is in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and screw everything back in and then I'll adjust the gears with the uh, Allen wrench. So we got this part back in, the springs connected, the cables connected, and this is why the cable's hard to do after the fact. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, screws back in to screw everything back into place. And then uh, I will show you how to readjust the gears if you had to move them around like I did. So let me just get those back in. So I've screwed those back in, everything's secure. Now for the gear adjustment. So as you can see, the gears are a little bit off. So we'll need to uh, put them back into place. So you can always use this for reference. So this gear needs to be pushed forward. This gear needs to be pushed forward. That one needs to be back more. And that'll get everything back into place. So what I do for that, I just do this. That one's pushed the other way. Now this one's gonna be a little bit trickier. So I wanna pull it more towards me. Okay, so I'm just gonna use my scriber hook here. Mm. Okay, so I messed up in this case. I'm gonna have to uh, undo everything and push that one back down. I went up too far. And I mentioned how much I hate doing this. Okay, I believe we are good now. I just need to adjust that spring once again. Okay, now I'll seal everything back up. Okay, so now we'll put the PTFE tube back in on this end. Now we're ready to connect it back into the unit. So we'll grab this, feed everything through. Don't screw anything in yet until everything has been fed through properly. It only goes in one way. So from here, you need to make sure you feed the uh, cable through the right hole. I just did it wrong, so I'm gonna have to pull everything out, feed it, the ribbon cable through properly. This is very, very, very difficult to do with a camera rolling, believe me. So please subscribe as a thank you for making these videos for everyone. I don't get paid to do this. I just do it for fun. one's a little bit trickier. I've never done slot three before. This one's a little bit trickier to feed in. Okay, so flip it over. And that goes in right here. And if you want to be extra neat, put it into the clip at the bottom here, like so. I'm just gonna get that PTFE tube in it reaches so if it doesn't reach I did something wrong okay so it reaches okay so the ribbon clip is there and then you plug it in there PTFE tube um, these ones go in the back so now it's time to screw uh, the part back in so hold it with one hand and then grab your screws and one two three four so I'm just gonna do a little camera magic and it'll be screwed in so the unit is now screwed back in. Now we can put it back into the base. Okay, so if the base is dirty, now would be your time to clean it. 
Okay, so now, do this again with the camera in the way. You wanna get your uh, two cables in the back put in, but careful, because if you pull too hard, they will yank out. So this is gonna be hard to do with the camera in the way um, without ruining the shot, so I will try my best. So I got both cables in, and then uh, I guess it's just gonna drop in like that. That was an accident. Usually you drop it in a little bit more gentle. So that's it. The part's been replaced. Now we go plug it back into my P1S or whatever machine you're using, and uh, we test it. Start by grabbing your cable that goes to the printer. Make sure your printer is off, by the way. And next, feed the PTFE tube through. But as you're feeding it through, you wanna make sure it actually goes through, so keep an eye on there. And then one way to figure out if it's in or not, give it a gentle tug. If it doesn't come out, you're good. Don't tug too hard. Once again, you break those teeth, it's an expensive mistake. So now replace your filament. Put your filament back in all its slots and then turn on the printer to test. So let me just get my filament in. Oh, by the way, you probably didn't see me put the screws in the back here. There are two screws, make sure you reinstall those. I stopped installing them because I've had to troubleshoot these damn AMS units so often that there's no point in me having screws at this point at all. Having the screws is just, they're gonna end up getting stripped and tossed, so. That's my situation, at least. Yours could be different. I'm gonna leave my cover open so I can show everyone. So I'm just gonna hit the power. Okay, my printer's turning on. Now let's see if the lights all go on. Yep. One light, two light, three light, four. We're back in business. And that's how you replace the feeder funnel or tunnel, whatever you want to call it. If you want to further check, you can go onto your Bamboo Handy app and uh, make sure all your filaments being displayed. So I'll do that just for the sake of this video, but I know it's working. My second uh, printer. And as you can see, there's four question marks because now I just need to put the filaments back in their spot. So we got dark blue, generic, PLA, save. This one is red, generic, PLA, save. And this one is generic, PLA, light blue. And the last one is white, generic, PLA. And then it's all loaded up and that's how you do it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. I am not sponsored. I am not paid to do this. I do this for fun, for your entertainment, for your education. So please subscribe. It's greatly appreciated. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Mike Bot, out.